Securing a nuclear-free region has been a long battle for the Pacific. After the Second World War, the United States, along with its French and British allies, frequently tested nuclear weapons in the region. In 1963, the British, American and Soviet governments agreed to ban atmospheric tests, but India, China and France were among those countries that did not. Nuclear testing in French Polynesia, Mururo Atoll, became the focal point for both test and resistance towards this activity. It was also during this time that the Nuclear Free Independent Pacific Movement and the Fiji Anti-Nuclear Group, or FANG, came about. Both groups played a significant role in influencing regional politics. Rachel Nath spoke with FANG's advocate and then-treasurer, Nick Naidu, and began by looking back to the 1970s. Yeah, so FANG was formed in Fiji in the 1970s following a a international conference that was held there and and sort of got formalized in the 19 sort of mid 1980s and uh, it was basically the Fiji anti-nuclear group it was a mixture of the student movement mainly from the University of the South Pacific and also uh, the trade union movement and the and 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 the NGO, including the Young Women's Christian Association. And could you tell us what gave rise to this movement? You know, as as the international um, movement for you know um, demilitarization and uh, disarmament grew, especially in the in the 80s, uh, and was very strong globally, but also. Uh, very much in in the neighbourhoods of Fiji, which was um, New Zealand and Australia, um, there was a you know there was a call for a conference in the Pacific, and also the independence movements in the countries were were quite strong in the 70s and 80s as well. So there was so the nuclear free movement, uh, and and especially in the Pacific, combined with the uh, independence movements. So we we ended up calling it the NFIP movement, nuclear free independent Pacific movement. And, and it was a unified movement to stop nuclear testing, which was going on um, at Mururoa Atoll in Tahiti and also uh, in the Marshall Islands in Bikini Atoll. So those were the two places that the testing continued in the 70s and 80s. And as a result, um, the groups were formed, and especially FANG, to counter that and try and stop that and also to make Fiji nuclear free as well. Nick? Talk to us about what the atmosphere was like back in the 70s. Yeah, so one of the interesting things was uh, Fiji had just come out of independence in 1970. The politics was still quite new and quite raw. but And the backdrop to that was that the, the regional institution for education was formed, the University of the South Pacific. And you had students from all the countries, including um, countries that the testing was going on or associated countries that there was testing going on. And there was also an anti-war movement because of Vietnam globally as well. And so all these things were going on and that was the environment of activism in those days. Mm. And what would you say were some of the milestones for FANG? Well, we, you know, FANG hosted a number of international conferences and uh, and and also, I think, cemented a lot of the smaller nation uh, movements or started or helped start some of the smaller movements in in some of the smaller countries and 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 created a more you know wider pacific movement a united pacific front and that also helped i think Aotearoa New Zealand um you know get traction on the international scene against nuclearization and i think in 1987 the the Labour government of David Longy um, actually passed legislation to make New Zealand nuclear free. And shortly afterwards, the newly elected Fijian government of Dr. Bavandra also uh, followed likewise. And, and, and I think prior to that and, and after that, many other nations in the Pacific declared themselves nuclear free. And it's quite interesting when you sit back now and you look at today's geopolitical challenges in the Pacific. And with the U.S. and China, mm. both nuclear powers flexing their muscles and how they can't, you know, have their um, ships and planes, especially the submarines and, and, and warships that are nuclear powered, um, enter most of the ports in the Pacific, except their own colonized ports. So, you know, so that's the legacy of, you know, that, that fight that we had. 
mm. to make the to make our countries nuclear free. I'm not sure if we'd be able to have that change happen today because of the power and influence of those big, you know, superpowers. Mm. But we managed to do it in those days, and they still continue till today. No doubt, a massive contribution to today's outcomes. Now, a lot has happened since then, Nick. The Pacific has, seen, you know, the assistance of from the West as well. A hand of friendship to right the wrongs, if you may, has been extended, or even to forge new friendships with players like Go Forward by safeguarding itself while also maintaining diplomatic ties. Yeah, and I think you know we always have to look at the positive side of you know, investment and friendships with other countries. So, mm. you know, small countries, I mean, small countries like Fiji, uh, who are geopolitically very uh, centrally located and very important st- for strategic purposes, um, mm. they have to be really careful um, not to, well, they have to be careful not to sign away their their rights based on the need for money. So Fiji right now is desperately in need of money. Mm. Um, because they've got a huge uh, deficit in their budget. The budget's going to be released, I think, next month. End of the month. Yeah, uh, end, of, end of the month, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so that's, you know, you, that budget will show most probably there's a desperate need for some mm. drastic action. And the easiest solution, apart from making life difficult for the average citizen, is to find don- donors mm. um, and international funding from well, the obvious, the four or five big countries, which are Russia, China, France, USA, and India. And yeah. so the problem will be, how do they take the money and still try their best not to be influenced? And uh, Fiji has been very good at that for, in the past with playing China and the US and the UK and Australia and New Zealand against each other. But I think it's a dangerous game that uh, that that uh, I think shouldn't be repeated with yeah. you know, in this current environment. 